The Wilderness Altar, a dark and foreboding place that many players will never dare venture into for fear of getting PK'd for all of their precious dragon bones. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stop... Oh, you've got to be shitting me. No way I'm being PK'd right now while I'm trying to get footage from my video. You're kidding me. All right, let's try this again. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to properly train prayer at the Chaos Altar in the Wilderness. So um, training prayer is pretty straightforward, right? Click the bone, click on the altar. However, there's a couple things that are definitely gonna help you out on your way to 99. And that includes things like how to find good worlds, some essential plugins you'll need to avoid PKers, and some tips that you can do to quickly escape PKers when they inevitably attack you. So the inventory that I bring when I go out into the wilderness includes 30 noted dragon bones, a locator orb, 1500 coins, and the rest of the slots are filled with dragon bones. The reason why I bring 30 noted bones is because you can use the druid out there and he will actually unnote your bones for 50 coins each. So 1500 coins is just enough to cover your unnoting of 30 bones and this definitely speeds up your tra prayer training significantly. However, you are certainly risking more when you die. So the risk versus reward is up to you. When I find that there's not a lot of PKers around, I'll generally bring 60 dragon bones that are noted and when there are a lot of PKers or high activity, I'll bring 30 or sometimes even zero. The locator orb is actually for uh, getting back home. So I'll actually use it to damage myself and it does 10 damage each time you click it and it'll eventually get you down to one health. And once you're at one health, you can go ahead and click the wine of Zamrak to kill yourself. You'll respawn at your respawn location and then I can use uh, my farming cape or any method of teleportation to get back to a bank to resupply. So you actually get the locator orb as a reward from the Dragon Slayer 2 quest. And I know that's a really, really high level quest. So if you haven't completed that, no worries at all. You can always use a Dwarven Rock Cake to lower your hit points and you'll get that from a sub quest from the Recipe for Disaster quest line. And if you don't even have that done, well that's okay because you can absolutely just kill yourself with the Wines of Zamrak. It just takes a little bit more time. So as far as the gear goes, we are bringing basically nothing because we're already risking our dragon bones and that in itself is enough. So I bring a 99 farming or farming skill cape because it has unlimited teleports to a bank in the farming guild as well as access to a spirit tree, which can get me back to my house, which in itself contains a wilderness obelisk used to get all the way back to the chaos altar. So I completely understand if not everyone has 99 farming, I realize that's a very high requirement. So in its stead, you're absolutely able to use a ring of dueling because that can teleport you back to the Ferox Enclave. The Ferox Enclave has has a bank in it as well as a pool to restore run energy, stats, health, and you can use the Wilderness Obelisk right next to it to get back to the Chaos Altar. So it should be noted that in order to effectively use the Wilderness Obelisks pictured here, you should have the hard Wilderness Diaries complete because this allows you to direct them to exactly where you want to go, let them to go rather than being randomly teleported around the Wilderness. If you do not have the hard Wilderness Diaries complete yet, then you should definitely be using a Burning Amulet, uh, which can teleport you just south of the Lava Maze and is extremely close to the Chaos Alt Altar and Lava Level 38 Wilderness. So before you go venturing out into the wilderness, there are a few essential plugins that I would like to show you in Runelight that will definitely make it easier to avoid PKers. And the main one here is actually the Player Indicators Hut plugin. So go to your plugins. This is one of the default ones that comes with Runelight. So go to Player Indicators. Um, and at the very bottom, make sure that Highlight Others is checked. And what this will do is it'll make sure that there's a tile highlighted up uh, underneath all of the other players and their names are drawn on the minimap. I'll show you why this is huge in this next clip. So 
So how did I know how to log out at that exact same moment without ever actually seeing another player approach me? Well, it's due to the Player Indicators plugin. And if you noticed, up in the top right-hand corner of my mini-map, there was a player moving up towards the Chaos Altar. He was running right at me. And it was because of the inventory or the Player Indicators plugin that I was able to see him because his name was drawn on the minimap. So even though I was really, really zoomed into the altar so that I could click the bones onto the altar much faster, I was still able to be aware of my surroundings and see other players as they approach me or log in on me. So one other setting that you're absolutely going to want to have enabled or rather disabled is your private. So come on down to the uh, chat box over here, locate private, right click on it and select show none. And what this is going to do is it's going to prevent PKers or really any player from tracking you from world to world. So when you go to your friends list and add someone as a friend, you can generally see what world they're on. However, with your private off, no one will be able to see the world you're on and it'll actually show you as offline, even if you are online. So this is super important if you keep getting PK'd by the same person, uh, even if you're not tr tr training prayer, if you're doing anything in the wilderness, you should have private off uh, because you do not want people just hopping from world to world, finding you over and over again and just killing you over and over again. You're just gonna be feeding them free GP at that point. So generally when it comes to finding a good world, there is no such thing. Uh, and truthfully, you're going to be in the wilderness. No world is going to be completely safe or free from PKers. However, there are a few things that you can do to try to uh, up your odds of not running into P into a PKer. Uh, the first thing you can do is generally avoid the skill total world. So, and I'm talking about like these worlds where it says 1750 skill total, 1250 skill total, 2200 skill total, because if you step into the shoes of a PKer and 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 they're thinking, you know, what would my prey do? Well, there's your, the prey is going to try to get into a world that isolates or removes a large player base uh, like the skill total worlds do, uh, because they're thinking, you know, that's going to incentivize not a lot of PKers to go to that world because they can't. But in reality, a lot of PKers are still going to check these worlds just because they think it's going to be more likely that prey are going to be hiding there. Um, so I would tend, tend to avoid those worlds. I tend to try to avoid worlds that are very, very high population because again, high pop worlds mean that there's probably going to be PKers mixed in with the normal PVMers. And I try to avoid... Um, the very very low population worlds. So you can see here I've automatically sorted my worlds by the population and if I scroll down a little bit you can see some worlds like uh, the Blast Furnace World, Soul Worlds, Soul Wars, LMS Competitive only have 263 people. Um, that's where Prey is going to instinctively go because they think you know less people less chance of being PK'd but not necessarily. A PKer can definitely go through and start hopping through this list of worlds, uh, going through the, the low population ones, because again, that's where they think their prey is going to be hiding. So you wanna mix it up. Don't go to your home world every time. Uh, don't go to the same world every time. And if, if you find a PKer in a world, don't just drop down to the next one in the list, um, especially if, you're, if your worlds are sorted by uh, you know, the, the world number. If you get caught on 395, don't go to 396. They're just going to check their next a lot of the time. So switch it up, uh, go to a different world, change it up often, uh, and hopefully those tips will help you avoid PKers. That being said, take this with a grain of salt because, you know, if you're, if you're at a, a peak time during the day, you're going to run into PKers. It's just going to happen. Uh, there's really no way to avoid it. So the first tip that I wanted to share with you is which direction to run in when you use the Wilderness Obelisk. So notice here how I am running to the west and avoiding the Chaos Fanatic. Now I could just pray Mage and run right through him, he'll do no damage to me. But the reason why I do this is so that I can actually log out instantly if I see people at the top of the Chaos Altar. Oftentimes PKers will actually just sit up here and wait for a PVMer or other person to, to log in right underneath them uh, or in the, the Chaos Altar as they're switching worlds and evading another PKer and then they just instantly attack you. But by avoiding 
the Chaos Fanatic, I'm able to not only see PKers up ahead waiting for me in the altar, but I'm also staying out of combat so that I can instantly log out. The next tip I have is so simple, but it is always have your mouse hovering over the logout button. You need to be ready to log out at any second because I'm telling you, a PKer will spawn in where you least expect it, when you least expect it. So having your finger on the trigger to log out will save you so much money. The third tip is so simple, but so many people seem to forget it, and that is what do you think happens at the Chaos Altar when a PKer comes and you're in the middle of banking or restocking? Well, at the very end of your bone trip, you can see what I do here is I open the doors and I shut them behind me. And what this does is it makes it look like the Chaos Altar has nobody in it, nobody's using this world, no one's been here for a while because the doors are closed and there are no human bones at the base of the, uh, at the, base of the Wine of Zamrak. So to be cares, they might just hop through this world and look to the next one. However, if you're leaving the door open, that's a sure sign to PKers to say someone has just been there and they're probably banking and they're probably gonna come back here very shortly. So always close that door behind you. So in this section, I'm just gonna go through a full run of what I do when I go in bank and show you how I use the Chaos Altar. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna withdraw 30 noted dragon bones, withdraw the rest of them as items, and bring out 1,500 coins or however many you need to pay for unnoting your bones, um, and head to the spirit tree. This is how I'm getting to my wilderness obelisk. Of course, you're free to use the, um, the amulet that teleports you deep into the wilderness, or um, use the Ferox Enclave and the, the Obelisk there through a Ring of Dueling. The house is just easiest for me. So one thing I want to discuss that I hadn't mentioned before is the uh, Blighted, uh, Blighted Ice Barrage Sacks that I have in my inventory. That's another way that you can escape PKers by freezing them and then just running away and logging out. Uh, so if you do happen to get in a conflict, that's a good way to escape. So here you can see I'm avoiding that Chaos Elemental and holding uh, my mouse over that logout button. I'm checking up ahead with the GPU rendering um, on Runelight so that I can see farther ahead. I don't see any PKers and I was able to instantly log out if I did see some and now I can start actually using my bones. So one thing that I haven't discussed yet again is the positioning of your screen. So you can see how I am trying to position my inventory as close as I can to the altar because it minimizes the distance that I have to move my mouse to actually use the bones on the altar. Although you can AFK this, it is much, much, much more effective to use the bones on the altar. It drastically reduces the amount of time you're vulnerable in the wilderness with your valuable dragon bones, and it drastically increases your XP rates, although it is a little bit more of a sweaty method. So what I'm doing in between each of these bones is I am checking to, on my mini map to make sure that I don't see anyone logging in. The disadvantage of having my inventory so close to the bones is that the, um, is that I can't really see what's going on around me, so I'm completely at the mercy of the uh, Player Indicators plugin and looking at my minimap to determine when people are actually logging in under me, sneaking up on me, coming at me, uh, or logging in anywhere around me. So here I'm just finishing off my inventory. I'm going over to the monk over here to unnote the rest of my bones and finish them off. And in this particular clip, I'm not actually using the, um, the death method where I'll use the locator orb to drain my HP and using that wine of Zamrak there on the table to, to finish myself off. Um, instead, because I've got my blighted ice barrage sacks with me and I'd prefer not to lose those, even though it's just five of them, um, I will actually end up walking back to the wilderness altar. Um, and I, I'm able to actually use that to get back to the Ferox Enclave and if needed, bank there. Um, however, I'll usually just teleport out with my farming cape because the, the bank is closer and I can get back to the obelisk in my house. 
So that's really all there is to it, to the Chaos Altar out in the wilderness. It's really not such a terrible place if you know what to do and know how to avoid PKers and really know what to do when they show up. So I hope you learned something and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It definitely helps me out and I'm always looking for more feedback to improve future videos. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.